which I'm about how I was groomed for almost two years and didn't even know it. So a little background information. When I was 15, my house burnt down and I went into a little bit of a depression. So after losing everything, my six siblings and I had to move into a three bedroom place with my grandparents. And a month or so later, I was looking for friends, someone to talk to or pretty much anything that would just make me feel better. Well, this guy messaged me and he said, you're pretty as shit. And I'm 15, so a bitch was excited. Well, two weeks later, I asked my mom if I could go over my friend Samantha's. And of course she said yes, because I had stayed with Samantha a lot during this time. Also because there was barely room for any of us in this three bedroom house. So a little background information on my parents. My mom had been a police officer for 12 years. Sadly, she had to retire because of a neck surgery. My ex stepdad was and still is a police officer today. Anyway, so my mom asked for pictures whenever I went over Samantha's to make sure I was really there. Like for part two. Story time about how I was groomed for almost two years and didn't even know. So like I said, my mom used to ask for pictures to make sure that I was really at Samantha's house. Well, Samantha lived about 10 minutes away from the guy that I was talking to. Every time that I went to her house, I would leave at about 8 p.m. and go over to his house. And he was 26 years old. And obviously I knew my parents would freak the fuck out if they found out. And we had planned to keep this a secret until I turned 18. So that way my parents couldn't tell me that I wasn't allowed to be with him. So flash forward to about three days before I turn 18. My mom comes into my work. She walks up to me, shows me a picture of him and says, who the hell is this? So of course I say I have no idea who the hell she's talking about. She said okay and then left. Well, as soon as I got home, her and my dad were sitting in the living room, waiting for me to explain who that man was. So I told them everything. They decided not to take legal action, but my mom explained to me that I was so young and he took advantage of me and stuff like that. So I never saw him again. Am I the asshole for demanding my fiance and his mom pay for a new wedding dress? Me, 26 female, and my fiance, 28 male, have been engaged for four months. We're planning on having our wedding on October 18th. My future mother-in-law kept annoying me and sending me suggestions for choosing the right wedding dress and said that she knew better and tried to get me to approve of wedding dresses that she chose and when she couldn't enforce her decision, she demanded I take her with me to buy my wedding dress so she could have an opinion. Before I went shopping, I asked her if she wanted to come but started making excuses about how busy she was with my sister-in-law. So I went shopping with my mom and I was able to find a really nice dress. I made some changes to it and it was perfect. It arrived to my apartment at the end of the week and I made sure it was stored in a safe place so it didn't get ruined. Yesterday, I got back from my mom's house and I found that my fiance wasn't home. Neither was the dress. I called him immediately, knowing that he must have taken it to show it to his mom, since she continuously asked to see it and refused to have me send her pictures of it. I was so mad when it was confirmed that my fiancé took it to show it to his mom, and he said he was going to be home in 30 minutes after he went to the supermarket. I waited for longer than I had to, and then when he arrived, I ran to get my dress that was buried underneath grocery bags. I took it to check on it and its zipper was broken, and the dress itself was stretched out. I was like, what the fuck happened to it? My mother-in-law must have tried it on, because it looked ruined. I had to call my mother-in-law when my fiancé told me his mom and sister took turns to try it on. I was absolutely livid. She told me she did nothing wrong, and that I was making a big deal out of it. She said she'd get a replacement for the broken zipper, but I told her to pay for a new dress, since it was stretched out and no longer fitting. She refused, and said, that I probably wasn't happy with my dress choice and wanted for her to pay so I could get a new one. My mom said she'd pay for fixing it, but I just hate it now that someone else wore it before me. I'm mad at both of them and seriously considering postponing the wedding. Do it. You, you the mother and the sister, emotional incest. You tried on that wedding dress because you want to fucking marry your son. So like I said, this story time takes place in 2016, okay? This all started off as a very normal night. I was at my house, sitting in my room by myself, just on my computer, and I hadn't really talked to anybody all day. Like, I pretty much just spent that entire day on my computer by myself. And it got to be like 11, 12 at night, and I get this phone call from Jonathan, okay? And I answer it. It was definitely not out of the ordinary that he was calling me at 12 midnight. So I answer the phone, and I'm like, yo. And before I could even say, like, what's up or anything, he just goes, Austin, Austin, are you there? I was like, yeah, what's up, man? 
and he's like yelling and I can tell him on speaker like it's really really loud there's a lot of background noise on the phone and he's like can I come through right now I was like yeah sure he's like all right I'll be right there and he hangs up and I had no time to ask him like why are you being so loud why are you talking so fast why do you sound super hyped up like he just sounded so loud and hyped up like it was really really crazy so I just assumed he was either really really excited or talking really loud because he had the windows down in his car and had me on speaker so I didn't really think much of it I just figured like you know I'll see him in 10 minutes so like 10 minutes go by and I'm still sitting on my computer and I hear a knock on my door. And it wasn't just a knock. It was a very, very loud knock, like almost pounding knock. And I go downstairs pretty quick. I open the door and he runs inside and he lays down on the couch and he's just out of breath. He's like, <sighs> and I was like, all right, yo, like you sounded so amped up on the phone. You're out of breath. You sound like you just ran a mile. Like what happened? Why are you acting like this? He's like, hold on. Gotta catch my breath. I'm like, okay. So we sit there for like a whole minute, just waiting for him to catch his breath. He's panting in my living room. He's just so, so amped up and i was like all right you ready to tell me he's like yeah he's like you're never gonna guess what i did i was like i'm not so just tell me he's like no try and guess i was like dude i'm not gonna guess what you did jonathan like just tell me what you did and he goes you remember that new car i bought last week yeah some backstory jonathan had just bought in a new car like a week prior to this so i respond i'm like yes i know about your new car he's like well i was going really really fast in this small town like 10 minutes from here testing out how fast i can go and let's just say and i was like oh shit what happened you pull over he's like nope now i'm here i was like wait 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 hold on what do you mean now you're here like what do you mean you didn't pull over he's like well austin the cop pulled out and started going really fast so i started going even faster and then another cop car pulled out of another parking lot and started chasing me as well so i ended up driving through like three different towns and then i took a couple turns shut my lights off parked, and i basically lost them so then i drove over here as quick as i could parked my car and now i'm here and I was like, dude, cannot run from the police, Jonathan, and then use my house as a hideout with your car right out front. Like, if they drive by and see your car, they're gonna know that I'm hiding you. Like, you're seriously risking me getting in trouble, too, just because you didn't want a speeding ticket, bro. Like, it's not my fault you made a mistake. He's like, Austin, I didn't know who else to contact, man. Like, I didn't know who else I could call that would let me stay at their house. Like, you're the realest friend I got, man. Like, come on. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't try and suck up to me so I let you stay here. Like, nah, man, that's not working. I'm like, bro, you gotta go. Like, I'm sorry. Like you're a good friend of mine, but I cannot let you stay here. Well, he's like, I don't know how many are looking for me, but like, come on, man, it's not that big of a deal. I'm like, dude, not to be mean, but you actually gotta go. Like, I don't do sleepovers anyway. You can't stay here. I'm not 12 years old anymore, and I also got a video to do. He's like, oh, I'll help you with your video, man. Like, we could tell a story together. I'm like, no, 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 no. You are not getting a collab on my channel in exchange for what you did tonight. Like, go. He's like, fine. So he walks outside, and I'm watching him walk to his car, and then all of a sudden he walks by his car, and out of nowhere he just starts running, like full speed. Sp sprinting down the street so i go outside and i yell i'm like jonathan what are you doing take your car and he turns around and he yells he goes no i'm running home i was like what are you talking about that's four miles you're not running home you're the most unathletic person i know he's like well things change austin and he starts running away i couldn't even believe what i was hearing so i go back inside i sit down now i'm filled with anxiety because not only is my friend running home without his car because he left it in my driveway he also could potentially get arrested if the police find him so i'm just worried i'm also i'm just freaked out out, right so i sit there for like two hours waiting to hear from jonathan and he finally calls me i'm like yo what's good he's like yo what's up man i got home a little while ago i'm like you actually ran home he's like yeah i stopped at a corner store for a bit but i'm home now i'm like bro you gotta come get your car like have someone drop you off come get it like i don't want your car here he's like dude i don't want it here either like my parents will kill me if they find out that i got in trouble i'm like dude you didn't get in trouble so come take the car Put it in your driveway where it belongs and don't leave it in mine. He's like, don't worry, bro. I'll come get it first thing in the morning. I'm like, bro, what? And he hangs up on me. I'm like, yo, this dude is ridiculous. Like, I was so mad at him. So anyway, I end up sitting there on my computer all night, really, really anxious. And the next day comes along. I didn't sleep at all. I get a call from Jonathan at 930 in the morning. And I answer it. I'm like, what's up, man? He goes, hey, man, I'm coming over to get the car now. I'm like, good. He goes, I got caught by the police. I'm like, yo, wait, what? He's like, yeah, they saw my license plate number last night somehow. An officer came to my house, like 40. He yelled at me in front of my parents, and then gave me a really expensive ticket. But I got super lucky. Like, he told me he was giving me a break because of how young I was and that I was a new driver. I'm like, dude, you don't understand how lucky you are at all. Like, most people would go to jail for that. He's like, yeah, man, for sure. Like, I'm really lucky. I'm like, all right, like, glad you know. Now come get your car out of my driveway. He's like, yeah, for sure. I'll be there in a bit with my dad. I'm like, all right, cool. So, like, 30 minutes go by, and him and his dad pull into my driveway in his dad's car, and he gets out of the car with his keys. He gets into his his car and him and his dad pull out of my driveway together and they wave goodbye and they leave and I no longer had his car sitting in my driveway and in the end everything was okay 
Now, Jonathan is very lucky that in the end everything was okay, because Jonathan definitely could have gotten in really big trouble. But yeah, in the end, everything was all good. Moral of the story is, do not be like Jonathan. This story time takes place two years ago. I was 18 years old, hanging out with two friends of mine. We were just driving around. We just got done getting food. It was a Friday night, and my friends had plans to go to this club. Now, I did not want to go to the club. I'm not really a club person. I don't really go that much. They went all the fucking time, and they wanted to go on this night. So I was like, you know what, whatever. Like, you guys just drop me off at my other friend's house. You guys go to the club, and we'll hang out when you guys are done. And they're like, all right, cool, sounds like a plan. So they took me and brought me to another friend of mine's house and dropped me off there. And then my two friends went to the club and I was now with my other friend. And we were just hanging out pretty much, just chilling at his house. And he smoked a lot of weed, like all the fucking time. He was always stoned. And it's a crucial part of the story time. So after a few hours of hanging out at his house, we get a call on my phone from my two friends who were at the club. And they're like, yo, dude, we're done with the club. Can you come pick us up? And I was like, do you want to go pick them up? I asked my friend. He's like, yeah, let's do it. So me and my friend drive off from his house to this club to go pick up my other two friends. And we pull to the club, park out front, and we're just waiting there. And my friend's like, yo, you mind? I was like, yeah, do whatever, go for it. So he starts smoking a blunt in the front seat of his car with the window down. And there's like all these people walking by just looking at us because they were all leaving the club and then all of a sudden we see my two friends come out and we're like guys over here and they both come up to the car and my one friend was so shit-faced he had just turned 21 around this time so he was like really celebrating and yeah he was just really fucking drunk that's why he wasn't driving he must have left his car like in the back parking lot or something for the night and uh, he gets in the car and so does my other friend and we're all just kind of packed in my friend's car now my friend's finishing his blunt and then all of a sudden i hear my one friend the drunk one say holy shit is that the earth science teacher from our school and we all start laughing because we think that he's just pointing out some random person that happens to look like a teacher from our school but then i look and i actually see the earth science teacher from our fucking high school that i went to and i was like holy shit that's actually him and my friend's like no way and my friend rolls the window down and starts yelling his name he's like come here come here we got some students in the car and none of us were students like we were all either graduated or you know there was me for example the one who didn't but you know we weren't in school anymore so i was like dude shut the fuck up like leave him alone he's just trying to have a nice night and he walks up to the car and he's shit-faced my fucking old high school teacher is shit-faced he's like guys what are you guys doing here no way and he's like freaking out because he's happy to see us and i'm like so surprised because from what i remember he wasn't the nicest teacher in high school he wasn't like the chill one he wasn't the one that let you get away with anything or like had a lot of leniency he was like the one that was kind of like strict he was that motherfucker that you were like yo this teacher definitely has a calculator up his ass or something but he was feeling good on this night he was so happy to see us and like it was clear that he was a little bit drunk and then he sees my friend the one in the front seat who was smoking the blunt and he's like hey are you smoking weed and he like gets really serious looking and in my head i'm just like oh no here we go like here comes the teacher pep talk where he's like you know you're way too young don't be smoking weed it's bad for you so my friend replies to him he's like yeah it's weed and the teacher just goes oh okay so can i hit it or what and we all just look at each other like did he just say that and before we could even process what he said he just re and just starts smoking it and we're all just like, what the fuck is happening right now? And he takes like two pretty good puffs and then hands it back to my friend. And he puts his arm around his girlfriend, his date that he was with. And then he looks at my friend and he's like, all right, don't tell school about that one. All right, I gotta get going, guys. Have a good night. It's good seeing you. He turns around and he starts walking away with his girlfriend. And me and my friends just look at each other. And my friend just goes, he's definitely my new favorite teacher. And we all just start laughing our ass off. And that was pretty much one of the funniest moments of my life, to be honest. And I hope wherever that teacher is, he's living his best life. First of all, I lost some kids. Okay, let me start over. I was in the computer lab, so I had all grade levels, from kindergarten to fifth grade. I had to go pick up the first graders and the kindergartners from their classrooms and then bring them back. No one showed me the proper way to do that. No one showed me how to create a line. So I'm like, it's common sense. Let me just do it the way I kind of remember from when I was in fifth grade. Actually, fourth grade, because I wasn't in elementary school in fifth grade. That's a different story time. So I just did my best. And I thought it was going pretty well, but these things happened. I thought my line was pretty all right. I'm like, okay, these kids are actually listening to me and this is a pretty good line. A teacher saw them and then starts screaming, this is a hot mess. Not to me, but to the kids. Eyes facing forward, feet facing straight, volume at zero. These kids turned into little military soldiers, little first graders. It was like automatic, like robots. Again, I don't think my line was all that bad. She was screaming at this kid like, you don't need to say anything right now. And the kid was like, okay. I was like, I was like, what is happening? Sorry, there was a man. This is probably the reason that I was told all day long, she's so nice. I would pass by the halls, kids would see me and be like, I like her, she's such a nice sub. Or she's really cool, I really like her. Like, why can't you stay with us every day? And it's not that I'm not disciplining the kids, I am. I'm just not in the kid's face telling them volume zero. But hey, she's a pro, she got them all quiet. The teacher next door to me was shouting all day long. And again, the kids were great. We talked about anime, we did breathing exercises. I gave out the stickers and they really enjoyed them. 
we had fun. I just can't imagine taking care of a group of kids every single day for an entire school year. Mad respect to teachers. I had mad respect before, but like, oh my gosh. How could you just come to work and scream? Because I, I, one of the teachers was helping me out and she did say, yeah, that teacher's screaming all the time. She's like, her group of kids are rough. And that's it, that's it. You just get a, a group of kids that are rough and, and you're just screaming all year long? No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> she never stopped shouting, nope. When I was returning the first graders, three of them thought it would be great to just run back to their classroom without letting me know. And since I haven't been to this school since I was in second grade, I had to check the map every two seconds. That's when they slipped away. I returned to all the kids, counted, and looked and saw that there were none left. I obviously started panicking. Went to the classroom with another teacher, asked if those students had returned, and of course they had. Oh my gosh. And the teacher was like, it's okay, it happens, they know where they're going sometimes. <laughs> I'm just gonna stick to middle school and high school, guys, thanks. <laughs> Story time about how I found my mother's stalker living underneath her bed. My mother and father divorced shortly after I was born. My mom has raised me all on her own, so her and I are extremely close. I would do anything for my mother. Back in the 90s, my mom became a somewhat successful model. She did runway shows and campaign ads. She began dating a photographer when I was about 8 years old. But something about him just rubbed me the wrong way. He was very controlling of my mother and always wanted to know where she was. This was a time before cell phones, and everywhere she would go, he would always end up being there. A few months into the relationship, my mother decided to break up with him. He threatened her and told her that he would make her regret it. He began calling our house at midnight, throwing rocks at my mom's window. One morning, my mom woke up to a knife in her tire. He really was trying to make her regret it. This is when my mom realized that we needed to move away and get away from him. We moved to Atlanta and my mom began getting more modeling work. She started earning more and we moved into a big, beautiful house. It had two floors, a basement, and a huge garden. We loved the house. Soon after we moved in, I started noticing some weird things. Sometimes windows would be wide open when I got home from school as well as random items in the garden. I came home from school one day and went to my mom's room. That's when I found a man's boot underneath her bed and her window wide open. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. After I found the boot under my mom's bed and her window wide open, I told her. My mom began to cry and was really scared. By the way, I was 12 at this time. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My mom went around the house, locking all the windows and doors. She told me if I ever saw anything like that again to call the cops. I could tell she was really scared and this terrified me. Every day after school, I would go straight to my mom's room and check underneath her bed. And weirdly enough, I started finding random items. One day, I found a pocket watch. A few days later, I found a handkerchief. And that continued for about a month. Mom and I decided to call the cops and give them all the items that we'd found. The cops told my mom there was nothing they could do because there was no physical physical harm done to her or me. Later that night, I wake up to my mom screaming. The house was dark and I ran down the hallway. Suddenly, a dark figure walks out of my mom's room. The black figure looked at me and walked away. I was frozen and couldn't move. The cops asked my mom what the man did. She said that when she woke up, she saw him standing in the corner of the room dressed in black with a black mask and that all he did was stare at her. When she asked him what he wanted, he told her you. The cops tried to convince my mom that it was probably a robbery. She told them about her ex and they said it was probably nothing and to just forget about it. A few days later, I come home from school and check underneath my mom's bed. There I found a handwritten note. You'll never guess what it said. It was terrifying. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Under my mom's bed, I found a handwritten note from her stalker. I couldn't bring myself to read it. I gave it to my mom and she read it. She cried and told me to pack a bag. That night, we went to sleep at a hotel and the cops came to check our house. The cops said they found nothing in the house and it was safe for us to come back. Two days later, I decided to come home from school early. But I knew that my mom wouldn't be home and I would be all alone. When I walked up to the house, I noticed my mom's bedroom window was open. I walked slowly up the stairs and swung the door open. And that's when I saw a man's foot sticking out from underneath my mom's bed. When he heard me open the door, he pulled his foot in. I screamed so loud and closed the door behind me and started running down the stairs. That's when I heard him open the door. I could hear his footsteps behind me as I ran down the stairs. As he ran down the stairs, he tripped and fell. I could hear him yelling in pain. I ran straight to the neighbor's house. She already knew about the break-in and believed me right away. She called the cops and my mother. Her husband decided to go check the house, but when he came back, he said there was nothing there. When I told him that he fell down the stairs, the cops thought he might be in the hospital if he injured himself. And there, they found a man dressed in black. That's when the man told the cops that he was my mother's boyfriend and that he came to visit us. They thankfully arrested him. When they showed my mom the man's mugshot, she recognized him right away as her ex. Turns out he had been breaking into our house for over a month, and he would sleep there every night underneath my mom. He was in prison for 10 years but got out last year. My mother and I live in fear. Alright y'all, I am SUCK. I just went to Subway because I wanted to eat fresh or something like that. And I will be damned 
if it was not the worst experience I've ever had. Subway, I'm calling you out. You know what, I'm not even gonna do that because Subway's pretty delicious. But uh, Karen from Subway, I'm calling you out. I get in line and there's only one lady in front of me, so I'm thinking this is gonna be a pretty quick trip, all right. No, she is ordering 14 sandwiches. Lady making the subs already looks annoyed and you know what, I don't blame her. I'm annoyed too, 14 sandwiches. Who does that? Once that's finally done, I figure, okay, I'll just get my sandwich and I'll be out of here. <laughs> it got so much worse. I'm fully aware that Karen, who, by the way, is the sub maker, is having a bad day. So I'm minding my manners. I'm saying, please, thank you. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Just trying to get my Italian BMT. But Karen's not having that today. Karen is pissed off. I am not joking when I say she grunted every time she put a piece of meat on that sandwich like <sighs> like she's lifting 20 pound barbells bitch it's ham then i ask her to toast it and she just says no what i wasn't even gonna mess with her so i was like all right let's move on to the veggies bad idea i ask her for lettuce i get a tiny little sprinkling and then i ask for pickles and this woman looked me dead ass in the eyes, picked up one pickle, and puts it on my sub. What am I supposed to do with one pickle? Are they like an endangered species or something? And nobody gave me the memo? But I remain calm. Uh, can I have some more? Yeah, I'll be damned if she didn't keep that eye contact and put a single jalapeno on my sub. Ooh, Karen, I'm starting to get mad now. I hate to admit it, but I turned into Donna. We all know a Donna. She's that one lady with the weird bob haircut, always asking to see the manager. She usually looks kind of like this. I asked her as politely as I could, ma'am, can I talk to your manager, please? Y'all, this lady looked at me and told me that, yeah, she'd go get her manager, but only so she could tell her manager that she's going to clock out and meet me in the parking lot to kick my ass. Where am I? And that just turned into this really awkward staring contest for 30 seconds. This lady looked at me and told me that, yeah, she'd go get her manager, but only so she could tell her manager that she's gonna clock out and meet me in the parking lot to kick my ass. Where am I? And that just turned into this really awkward staring contest for 30 seconds. I was gonna reenact that part, but I don't think I need to subject y'all to that. So after the world's longest staring contest, Karen finally goes to get her manager. <sighs> Only thing that this manager says to me is, you should take your sandwich as is, or I'm a litter clock out. Yeah, I didn't know what to do, so I left. And now I'm getting home with my raggedy ass sandwich. And just in case y'all think I'm joking about all this, I'm gonna go inside and show you my sandwich. There's the jalapeno. And there's the pickle. She forgot the sauce? If I die, tell my mom I love her. I'm going back in. Karen, you gonna give me my damn sauce? Ah! Well, I just had the worst state of my life, and I'm probably going to jail over it. Let me just start by saying, I've always been awkward. I just didn't know it could get this bad, okay? Guys, it really wasn't my fault, though. Like, she was super pretty, and I was super nervous, and... Not only did I manage to knock my drink over twice... The second time, I knocked my fork off the table, too, and we both go to reach for it at the same time, and I headbutted her right in the nose. There, there was a lot of blood, like a lot. Of course, she stands straight up, both hands over her mouth crying, and I'm still knelt down on the ground trying to find the freaking fork for God knows what reason. And everybody starts clapping. And I, I, I guess at the time, I thought they were just making fun of us, you know, like when a waiter, like, spills stuff. That's not what happened. 
as you could imagine, I'm freaking mortified, but she took it really well and she was okay. So we sat back down and everything was fine until about 10 minutes later. Actually having like some good conversation. And then the waiter brings a cheesecake with the words congratulations written on it from the couple that's a few tables down. Actually, we're both looking at this waiter really confused, right? And then he explains that the cake is to congratulate us on our engagement. It seemed that the couple down the way only saw the second half of that interaction because they thought I had proposed. At that point, I just asked for the check. You know, it's the least I can do considering I just gave her an unscheduled nose job. And then we headed outside. With me, there's a tendency for bad things to always get worse, and that's exactly what happened. You see, when we were saying goodbye, I decided for God freaking knows what reason <laughs> to say, I'll call you later to schedule the wedding. And then we both hug and start to walk away, hopefully to never, ever, ever, ever see each other again. It turns out we're both going the same way. I don't know why I am the way that I am. But I felt awkward and I grabbed her hand. And so we started walking to the cars, holding hands. And we walked past my car and got to her car. And then I like shook her hand off mine and then walked back to my car. But my car wouldn't start. So I had to walk back to her car and ask her for a jump. Yeah, she just rolled up her window and drove away, which fair. Anyway, so I just got home and I'm never leaving again. She just texted me. She's getting her shining word. Again, there. Six years ago today, I went viral for the very first time on Facebook. It was an event that catapulted me on the wildest journey, and it is something that I want to share with you today. Nearly eight years ago, I had a gorgeous, curvy, mid-40s client book me for a boudoir session in a beautiful hotel, and I thought she looked like a goddess, but as most women do, she had a request. She came to me and said, I want you to Photoshop all of my cellulite, stretch marks, loose skin, wrinkles, just make it go away. I want to feel gorgeous just once. So I did exactly as she asked. I went home after her shoot and I made every last mark, dimple, wrinkle, disappear. I turned her into the woman she told me she had dreamed of being her whole life. Christmas rolled around and she gave her husband the beautiful album we had created together. And a few weeks later, I received this email from him. Hi, Victoria. I am Blank's husband. I am writing to you because my wife gifted me with her boudoir album for Christmas. I don't want you to think that in any way I am upset with you, but I have some food for thought that I would like to pass on. I have been with my wife since we were 18 years old, and we have two beautiful children together. We have had many ups and downs over the years, and I think, well, actually I know that my wife did these pictures for me to spice things up. She sometimes complains that I must not find her attractive, that she wouldn't blame me if I had found someone younger or more beautiful. When I opened the album that she gave me, my heart sank. These pictures, while they are beautiful, they are not my wife. You made every one of her so-called flaws disappear. And while I'm sure this is what she asked you to do, it took away everything that makes up our life. When you took away her stretch marks, you took away the documentation of our children. When you took away those lines around her eyes, you took away over two decades of our laughter and our worries. When you took away all the cellulite, you took away her love of baking and all the goodies we have eaten over the years. I am not telling you to make you feel horrible. You're just, I know you're doing your job and I just want you to know that I'm here to thank you. Seeing these images made me realize that I honestly do not tell my wife enough how much I love her and adore her just as she is. She hears it so seldom that she actually thought perfect images are what I wanted or what I needed her to look like. And I have to do better. And for the rest of my days, I'm going to celebrate and try to help her find the beauty and the body she deems imperfect. Thanks for the reminder. While so many people have had opinions about this letter over the years, it sparked something in my heart that forever changed how I photograph women and why I won't airbrush you to perfection anymore. You deserve to love the skin you're in and to feel like home in the body that bears the story of your life, not the body I can. So I had my kids the other day for fall break, like the whole fucking week, right? And as you can see, I got a new truck. Hey, because it's my birthday, bitch. All right. And I'm taking them home. And as you can see, the truck is black. 
My kids get in a car, truck, whatever. It's a Silverado, all right? And all you truck people can shut the fuck up. This is what I could afford. I don't want a Dodge or a Ford because I could only afford a Silverado, okay? They get in the truck and they're like, Daddy, Daddy, let's play a game. Let's play a game. And I'm like, no, let's play shut the hell up and drive the quietness home. Fuck no, let's play a quiet place. Fuck no, they can't do it. So they're like, let's play I Spy, let's play I Spy. I was like, all right, fine, fuck it, whatever. And they, they came out swinging like Tiger Woods' wife. Buddha, all right? And this is what happened. The, the first round, all right, they came out mashing buttons like a 13-year-old in Mortal Kombat. They just wanted the fucking fatality. My middleest child, second oldest, goes, I spy with my beautiful little eye something yellow. I, there ain't a yellow fucking thing in my car. I'm thinking it's the sun, a caution light, the lines on the ground. My oldest daughter's first guess, like she had just unmasked the villain in Scooby-Doo, right, right, raggy, like Scoob, all right? She goes, Daddy's teeth. Mother, what the fuck? I... And my, my middle child was like, ding, ding, ding. She's like, yeah, daddy's teeth, yellow. You got it. It's your turn. Hold the fuck up. We're not just going to switch turns like you just didn't hurt my feelings. They are becoming young women because their jokes fucking hurt. I was like getting an email from John Gruden. I was just baffled by their unprofessionalism, all right? And like every woman over 30, I was fucking offended. And now I understand why they want to talk to the manager. I want to talk to the kidager. You understand it, jer? It hurt. That shit came out of left field, all right? kids, man. They just hurt your feelings all the time. And I'm paying to hang out with them. That's the fucked up part. Goddamn child support.